The new American supercar is going Mach 7. Well, not the speed of Mach 7, but we'll fill you in. The Aston Martin 177 quietly gets rolled out to the public, we think, and Formula One testing is underway in Valencia for the 2011 season. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D. You're watching Fastlane Daily, the show that we hear is one of Charlie Sheen's favorite when he's not doing drugs. Okay, the guilt has finally set in. We should have reported on this from the Detroit Auto Show, but we didn't, and we're sorry. It's America's latest supercar, the Mach 7 Motorsports Falcon. The Michigan-based company is one we've honestly never heard of, but they definitely have something that caught the eye of the automotive blogosphere. With only 15 units expected to be built each year, the Falcon will feature a Corvette LS3 motor with 500 horsepower inside a hydro-formed carbon fiber monocoque chassis. Mach 7 has said that if the customers wish, the LS9 motor will become available for the car as well. Performance specs were not provided, but the company, who is known for tuning Vipers, said that their new supercar will be competitive against late generation SRT 10s. The price tag, you ask? That's 200,000 bucks, with the first deliveries by the end of the year. Fox 7, huh? I was half expecting to see a Gillette Razor with seven blades. <laughs> They're getting out of hand with that stuff. Like Mach 5, Mach 5.1, whatever it is. And now, what all you F1 fans have been waiting for. The Formula One season is now underway and teams are in Valencia this week testing their new cars. A few teams still haven't revealed their new designs like McLaren, so they're running an old chassis during these test days. Ferrari was the first to reveal their F1 contender, the F150. We promised Leo we wouldn't pull a four joke with that one. Okay, we lied. That was our joke, even though it wasn't an F1 car. So there you go. Next came Team Lotus with their T128, Sauber with the C30, Renault, the other Lotus team, with the R31 in gold and black, Red Bull had Newey's latest, the RB7, Mercedes has the W02 with a very radical new front wing and chin design, and Toro Rosso with the STR6. One thing worth mentioning is a lot of these cars probably don't have all of their radical aero installed for these first tests. We suspect Valencia is a place for the teams to set good baseline tests before they start adding all those tricky aero packages. Leo will have more info on this later in the week on Shakedown. Also, funny enough, Leo will have an analysis of how him and Eugene Levy are long lost brothers. Yeah, I mean, it's uncanny. They could just, right, Leo? Yeah. And as I said yesterday, BBC America's Top Gear is sponsoring FLD this week, and they want to hear your first car stories. If we and BBC America like your story, you can win a trip over to London to see a Top Gear live event. Well, you guys really responded in numbers, and we appreciate it. One of those video responses was from good old John Olive in Little Rock, Arkansas. And this is what he had to say about his first car. Isn't she a beauty? Isn't that just a beautiful car? That's my first car, a 1960 Simca Chambord Vedette. Now, how in God's name my father found that car in night, the summer of 1968 in Little Rock, Arkansas, I have no idea. I did a little research on the car. There was only 13,000 units manufactured that year in the plant in France. How that car got from France to the center of this country in the most redneck part of the state of Arkansas, I have no idea. Wow, a 1960 Simca, huh? An awesome video though, John. But my guess how the car got from France to the center of this country was probably by boat first and then just driven. I'm just saying. But these are the type of my first car stories BBC America wants to hear. Stuff that's interesting and different. So to share yours, go to Twitter and use the hashtag MyFirstCar or post the video on YouTube with the tag my first car. BBC America will also show their favorite My First Car stories on air during the new season of Top Gear. Mondays 9, 8 central starting this Monday, February 7th. Again, if you have a great story, you can win a trip to London to see a Top Gear live event. Enter the contest at myfirstcarstories.com. Do it. Do it. Have you seen Alan Kaufman's? AK's got one. Yeah, look it up. Myfirstcarstories.com. And GT Spirit has got shots of the first customer delivered Aston Martin 177 supercar. Shots were taken in Monte Carlo, the most obvious of places to see a supercar. But now this is a little unexpected. There wasn't a press release to confirm that Aston had started selling the cars. But these photos show a production 177 with Monaco license plates. Not the traditional manufacturer license plates on all the test cars we've seen. Yeah. So just to recap, 
The 177 will get a 7.3 liter V12 with over 750 horsepower and a top speed of 893 miles no per way. hour. No way. You're right. I'm kidding. 220 miles per hour. That's, but that, still ridiculous. that's still pretty fast. Well, that will just about end this 1031st episode of Fast Lane Daily. I'm your boy Derek D. And hopefully Mother Nature and Old Man Winter go easy on each other tonight, if you know what I mean. These two have been really pounding away on each other this winter. Yeah. Go easy out there. It's icy. But I think north of us is getting worse. Raise the roof. It's on fire. Mother Nature and Old Man Winter are making it rain on this bitch. I was just listening to Make It Rain. Yeah? It's a good track. It was going like this. <laughs> well, that was... That's the main... <laughs> <I don't know. laughs>